So we've seen how Orion will allow us to move up its belt into Taurus and then into Auriga. Do you notice up here Perseus and Cassiopeia Andromeda and Pegasus and Triangulum? So there's a few of, this, of the constellations that we're already familiar with and way over here you perhaps see Leo or part of Leo. Let's move on. So those are the three constellations above the equator that we're familiar with, Orion, Taurus, and Auriga. Capella is the brightest star in Auriga. We noted that Aldebaran was the brightest star in Taurus. And there's Perseus. Good old Cassiopeia. Remember that one? Try and kill him. Now, we can also use Orion to move up into this beautiful constellation here, nicknamed the Twins, Gemini. Can you see how if you follow, go from Rigel through the belt, up through Betelgeuse, you end up in Gemini. And Gemini has two very bright stars that are quite noticeable, Castor and Pollux. And there are other bright stars in the night sky above the equator. Quite a few of them, as a matter of fact, beginning with Betelgeuse, Betelgeuse, Rigel, part of Orion, Aldebaran, part of Taurus, Capella, part of Auriga. Castor and Pollux, part of Gemini. Where's Regulus? Right, it's part of Leo, Leo the brightest star of Leo. And here's Sirius. <coughs> and Sirius is the brightest star of the night sky. And it's the main star of the constellation known as Canis Major. But of all the stars in the night sky, Sirius is the brightest. And Procyon belongs to Canis Minor. And believe it or not, there's just two stars in this entire constellation. There's Canis Minor right there. Now, here can you find Canis Major, the big dog. Sure, find the belt of Orion and then move your way down and that'll take you right to Sirius and then this constellation down here is Canis Major. So again we use Orion, we use the belt of Orion to navigate down to Canis Major and Sirius and up towards Taurus and Auriga and then across and up to Gemini. So here we have the star chart. See if you can pick out where the constellations are and, and their shapes uh, by just referring to the star chart. If we change the magnitude, the brightness of the stars, remember that the lower the number, the brighter the star. You can see some of the different stars showing up. And here we have some of the fairly bright uh, stars of the night sky. And just down here, there's a bright little constellation known as Phoenix. Here's Phoenix right here.
magnitude 5 stars. What do you see here? Can you make out any shapes there? In the first lesson of the course, there was a bit of discussion about this constellation here, the Southern Cross. But these constellations here, Vela and Carina, are fairly bright. Now, we're at the equator, so let's take a look at what happens to the night sky during the course of 24 hours. We'll pick that up in a moment. 